Well, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I welcome you here at Worship at Christ Church United Methodist in Charleston, West Virginia. I'm glad so many of you are here in the Centrum gathering with us today. If you're joining us online or on the radio, we invite you to go to our website at ccumwv.org, and there you can download a copy of the bulletin and the liturgies and announcements and things we'll be sharing in our worship today. But we're very glad you're here with us, no matter where you are. As we gather for this special Sunday, I know churches do this at various times uh, about this time of year, but this is our uh, Sunday where we celebrate our graduates, and so we'll be doing some things in our service to to celebrate with them and uh, their families as folks move through this transition of graduating from high school and college. And so we're glad you're all here with us today. I wanted to call your attention to a couple of announcements, Uh, one of those being immediately following our service down the fellowship hall. It's a uh, we're having tacos uh, to help raise money for the youth mission trip. It is Cinco de Mayo as well, so we're kind of uh, enjoying that day. But come down and have some, some tacos, some food, and fellowship and gather down there uh, for those activities. You'll also see uh, in your bulletin listing a variety of the activities that will be coming up in the near future. Uh, one of those is on the 19th. There's the Loving Remembrance Luncheon. If you'll remember, it's a new ministry. We started with one of our innovation grants uh, to help meet the needs of families who've lost their children, particularly uh, in neonatal situations, and so we invite you to come to that luncheon to hear the speaker. Also, in the next couple of weeks, we'll, few weeks, we'll be having our uh, family night at the ballpark. Uh, we have tickets, and we have tickets for you to invite your friends uh, to come and join you. I know uh, Ashley's uh, put some energy into that, again, through one of our innovation grants, and so she uh, can give you more information if you reach out to her. Uh, regarding that special time to be together. And of course, as we move into this coming summer, there's lots of activities. We've already had our first mission team through Cross Ministries was here last week. We have a, nobody here this week, but in the weeks ahead, you'll see a lot of folks coming in and uh, going to work on houses through our partnership through Rebuilding Together. I'd also like to invite uh, Shirley Jakes to come up uh, and share with you a moment regarding our assistance ministry, which is an ongoing ministry we have every week. morning. During the last month, the assistance ministry has helped many of our neighbors who have been in need. One woman worked two part-time jobs, went to school, and cared for her four-year-old. 
another lady who came had just recently moved back to Charleston to be near family after leaving an abusive situation. A man and his wife came who they had five children. During COVID, they had lost their contracting business and they have yet to be able to find adequate employment. You help these people and they were grateful. I like to share with the people who come on Tuesdays that the money for this ministry comes from you. It's not a church budgeted item. I like to tell them it's because you care. You once again have an opportunity to place a donation in the offering plate which will be at the door as you leave today for the assistance ministry or you can make a donation at any time by so designating it for that ministry. When you do this, you truly are receiving a blessing by blessing others and serving as the hands of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley, for all your work and your team and leading us in this ministry that meets the needs of our neighbors who are going through some difficult times and need some assistance. And thank you for your generosity, uh, all of you, for in supporting that ministry. We serve quite a number of folks each year uh, through this program. But now, as we move into our time of worship, I invite you to center yourselves wherever you are, those of you here in the centrum and those of you uh, online or on the radio, and let us all worship God together on this very special day. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Chapters end, new ones begin. More school or new work or something completely different. Endings carry the seeds of new possibility. Endings are never the last word in God's eyes. There is grace surprising us. Resurrections freeing us. Hope reviving us, life calling us, music lifting us. Praise God for endings and beginnings.
please join me in the gathering prayer. Loving God, you create life from the earth on which we dwell and breathe into it new life and meaning. Graciously, you empower us with knowledge and skills to aid one another as we live out our life on this earth. Bless our gathering this morning as we recall your grace and kindness to these young lives and celebrate the endings and beginnings of our needs you provide. Empower us all to live lives worthy of the callings you offer, that we may strengthen one another and your creation as we walk together with you through this life. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us share in signs of reconciliation and peace. I'd like to invite all the children up here this morning. Come on, David, Meredith, I know you guys are here. I saw Charlotte somewhere. Don't be shy. Good morning. Good morning. It's graduation Sunday. Are you guys my graduating seniors? Hello? Hello? You're, you're, you're not the high school kids, right? No? So the high school kids have a big transition to make, right? They're going to college. Did you know you guys have a transition this year too? What grade are you going to be in next year? Second. Second. Charlotte, what grade are you in next year? Second. So were you guys in second this year? So you're moving up as well, right? I took the monsters and I'm six. Okay. You're going to third grade. You're in second now? You're going to skip second grade and go to third? Okay. No. Charlotte's being silly this morning. But... Are you guys going to be in the same classroom you were in this year? No. Are you going to have the same friends in class? Are you going to sit next to the same people? You don't know? We're going to see the same people. You're going to see some of the same people? Yeah, probably some. But the point is, even though we're not making a big transition like the seniors, we all have to make transitions each year, don't we? 
friends move away, we get new teachers, we lose teachers. But our scripture lessons today are going to talk about the fact that God is always with us. God doesn't change, God doesn't move, God doesn't leave. He's always there, always the same thing. What do you think about that? Do you like to know that Jesus is with you? Yeah. Do you think that gives you comfort when you're scared that you're not alone? You don't know? Okay. Will you guys say a prayer with me this morning before you head upstairs, okay? Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Help us to remember we're not alone. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ashley. Now, as we come to our time of prayer, I uh, lay on the altar table uh, the prayer concerns. Those of you that have joined us in the centrum have written down as you've come in and throughout the week. If you're joining us online, uh, you can share your prayer concerns through the chat feature uh, on the online feed. Also, if you're listening on the radio, you can send your prayer concerns in to the church office and we'll add them to our list. As is our custom, we also collect prayer concerns from those who come to the assistance ministry, which Shirley was sharing about earlier. One of the individuals that came this week asked for prayers for their family uh, because they were in a season of grief following the loss of her mother. Another one asked to pray for their grandchildren. uh, And another one asked for other prayers for family members. Many of them, of course, asked for prayers regarding their financial situation as they continue uh, to try to seek employment. So I lay all of these prayer concerns on our uh, altar for our prayers today. As I light our prayer candle, it reminds us of our unity with all of the United Methodist churches here in our annual conference and throughout the world. And so let us center ourselves through the prayer chorus and the lighting of the candle. And let us go to the Lord in prayer. Come, come, O gracious and loving God. Come, come fill your children with your love. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with your peace. As we gather today, we come in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for your love and grace and power in our lives. Thanksgiving for the young people in our midst who are making a transition our graduates both in college and in high school 
And we pray that your loving grace, of course, would be with them, carrying them through this change in their lives as they move from one means of education to another or to the world of work. For God, we know you are one who joins us at all the thresholds of life. And so we pray that you would be with us as we move through this threshold. We give thanks also for parents and others who've nurtured and carried these young ones to this place in their lives. We give thanks for your church, this church that nourishes us and strengthens all of us, a church that is also going through transition. We pray for our church as we move through these times of change with new legislations and structures and things coming in the weeks and months ahead. And we pray that you would be that light shining, giving us grace as we move through this time together. We pray for our sisters and brothers who are ill or in mourning, praying for your love and peace to, to surround them and to carry them and to strengthen them. We pray also, O oh God, for your world, this world that seems so filled with strife and war and hardship, but a world we know that you called good. For indeed, you want it to be a place of peace, of that great shalom through, that comes through you. So help us, O oh God, to be builders of that shalom, this kingdom of God, as we share with our sisters and brothers and lift one another up. And we ask it as always in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Now we're going to take this time to honor our graduates. As I call your names, please come forward. Alex Carpenter is the son of Jonathan and Susanna Carpenter, the grandson of Dayton and Barbara Carpenter, and the late Bill Gardner and Pat Gardner. Alex is graduating from GW High School and plans to attend West Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. Or, sorry. Yeah, you're letting fighting's words. I'm so sorry. There's going to be a bunch of people throwing stuff at you. I, a yeah, I know. <laughs> that, if that was the only mistake I make today, that was probably the worst one I could have made. <laughs> Next is Katie Clark, the daughter of Thomas and Jennifer Clark, the granddaughter of Walter and Sally Clark. She's also a G-Dub grad, and she will be attending Virginia Tech as well. And I joked earlier that Virginia Tech must be doing some pretty good recruiting in Charleston. Next, we have Blaine Johnson, the son of Carl Johnson and Paige Rawlings, the grandson of Wayne and Sally Johnson, and Dick and Lynn Clendenin, another GW graduate who is attending Marshall University. Gage Tawney, the son of Nate and Amy Tawney, is graduating from Charleston Catholic, and he, uh, he plans on attending Guilford College in North Carolina. Gavin Burdett, the son of John and Amy Burdett, is graduating from George Washington High School, and he plans on attending WVU. And last we have Michael Lukauer, the son of David and Sheila Lukauer. He is another GW graduate and will be attending the University of California, San Diego. We also want to recognize two of our college graduates. They are not here with us today, but we honor Meredith Aliff, the daughter of Rob and Tracy, Rob Aliff and Tracy Wilkerson. She is graduating from Miami University of Ohio. And Thomas Flannery, the son of David Flannery and Kathy Beckett, grandson of Eileen and Larry Beckett, and he is graduating from West Virginia Wesleyan. So first, let's give everybody a round of applause. Now, all the, gra the high school graduates today uh, received a walking stick and a Dr. Seuss book, All the Places You Will Go. 
So I thought it was really funny whenever I came here last year and that I, I saw that this was our graduation gift. Uh, most churches give out a Bible, and I mean, I get it, but this is really cool. Um, I'm really glad that um, Christ Church does something like this. Uh, the Dr. Seuss book, The Places You'll Go, to remember to um, keep your youthfulness and take it with you, all the places that you're going to go. But also the walking stick um, as a symbol of your church um, being your walking stick in life. We can't go with you to college. I'm sure um, moms and dads would love to go. But uh, sadly, none of us can go with you. But this is something you can take with you for support and encouragement as a constant reminder that the love and the support and encouragement you have back home. So if everyone would just take a moment, and I ask that you reach um, a hand forward, and we're going to say a prayer over the graduates. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and give thanks for these young children. They're becoming adults, and they're moving on and starting new chapters. They're leaving home. They're doing new things. It's exciting and scary all at the same time. Lord, we know that no matter where they go or what comes their way, that you're with them. Help them to lean on you and to lean on their family and church back home. Show them your presence when they need it. Never let them feel alone. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Then we also have a liturgy of celebration uh, for you all. And so I invite you all to join with me in the liturgy that's printed uh, on the screen. Uh, Your responses will be in bold. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way and the truth. Bless our graduates as they now finish their course of study. Thank you for those who taught and worked beside them. And all all who supported supported them them along along the way. Walk with the graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen Strengthen their their many many talents and skills. skills. Instill Instill in them a confidence in the future future you plan. plan. Where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people. For the graduates, this truly is a day of new beginnings, a time to remember and move on, and a time to believe what love is bringing. May they always know that Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Amen. I don't know. You can go back and sit down now. Blessings. Good to see you guys.
Today, the Old Testament lesson is from Deuteronomy 31, verses 7 through 8. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and bold, for you are the one who will go with, with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their ancestors to give them, and you will put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Sorry, please rise for the reading of God's word. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the gospel lesson today is something that I've been pretty familiar with. I've spoke on it many times following mission trips. The Great Commission is something that uh, I often go to after a mission trip, but I want to focus a little bit differently on this today. When God tells us to be strong, he makes us strong. The Bible is not just information. It is the power of God to help all believers. God makes promises to us to build our confidence in him. Before Jesus sent out his apostles, he promised them, All authority is given to me on heaven and earth, and I am with you always to the end of the age. They believed him, And they went with his blessing. God also had a plan for the Apostle Paul. He converted Paul and sent him all over the Roman Empire to tell people about Jesus the Savior. But Paul had a thorn in his flesh. He prayed that God would take it away. But God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Paul responded, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. It's the same with all of us. God will challenge us with problems or difficulties come up in our lives. He allows these things to help us realize our need for him. His power has no limit. We are doing, when we are doing his will according to his word, God will accomplish great things for his kingdom. Just like with Joshua, he followed God's plan against Jericho. God made the walls fall flat and gave him the city to conquer. God showed himself to be a true God of not just Israel, but all nations. Recently, I wrote a devotional for the annual conference, and I was talking about God being with us even though we don't always see him. I wrote that we often perceive God as an old grandfatherly figure, but I like to think of God more as a young parent who has recently baby-proofed the house and is letting us roam and explore our surroundings. Like any loving parent, 
God is with us the whole time. Sometimes we feel him sitting next to us. Sometimes we as children think that he's looking the other direction. And that's usually when we get ourselves in trouble. Like any good parent, God knows that we need to be given a chance to work some things out on our own. This is how we learn and grow. He gave us gifts and abilities, and he wants us to use them. I know you've all heard the old cliche, God will never give you more than you can handle. This is often spoken to graduates, young parents, people that are growing through changes in life or hard times. But the Bible never says that. We're told in scripture that God will be with us if we are faithful and he will equip us for what is needed. Oftentimes when we speak to graduates, we speak of hope, freedom, and wonder. While all of that is great, it's also to be noted that life isn't always perfect. Sometimes we, be, we need to be ready for when things happen. So many young adults are going out into the world for the first time. And let me let you in on a secret. You're going to fail. A lot. We as parents try to prepare, you, prepare our children for what life throws at them. But even sometimes we miss the mark. When my son went into the military right out of high school, like so many other airmen in his unit, they didn't always know all the skills that they needed. We had a mother's group where the mothers would chat and share stories with one another, comfort each other. One day a lady was in our group and she was talking about how the dryer had caught fire on her son's unit. None of the young men in this unit knew that you had to clean out the lint trap in the dryer. All the mothers were warning the other mothers to make sure they told their children that this task needed to be done. The truth is we can never fully prepare you for everything life will bring your way. Because we don't know everything that life will be bringing your way. But thankfully, God does. He knows about all the little fires that are coming your way in life. And if you let him and have faith, he will help you with whatever happens. Does this mean that he's going to fix everything for you and make it easy? No. He never promised his disciples that it would be easy following him. He promised them that he would be with them. This is a huge difference than what we often expect as Christians. As young people, sometimes you can get in a hurry to grow up. Sometimes you may think you know everything already, and you're ready to face the world. But today I tell you to not be in such a hurry. As a matter of fact, some of us grown-ups here need a reminder of this too. If you've ever seen me running around the church, I have a shirt that says, Jesus wants us doesn't want us to act like adults. He gets us. This is from a movement of young Christians. You may even have seen some of their ads during the Super Bowl. The phrase, Jesus doesn't want us to act like adults, he gets us, is a simple line loaded with misdirection, just like Jesus' teachings often were. On multiple occasions, Jesus would use the term childlike to refer to a humble and trusting gratitude. In one instance, he told a group of followers, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Christian notation of ultimate eternal life and fulfillment, this is what we strive for. But it's a very countercultural message to the people that would have heard Jesus. Children were not regarded the same way as they are today. Sure, they were loved by their families, but according to scholars, 
Most children didn't survive till the age of 14. Also, society treated the children more like property rather than people. So what did Jesus mean when he told us to be like children? Being humble enough to place one's trust in a power greater than itself. Jesus' example of humility and trust can teach us something about relationships. Jesus loved people fully and wanted them to accept his love. Void of the criticism that creeps into just about every human relationship over time. He was never cynical about people. He always loved, always forgave, and like a child who never experienced disappointment, he always believed that other people were capable of loving each other the same way. It's important for us to understand and remember the love he has for us so we can understand the power of his promise that he will never leave us. How do we remind ourselves that God is with us? I encourage you when you wake up in the morning to tell yourself that Jesus will be there. When you go to bed at night, Jesus will be there. When you're talking to a person at work and they roll their eyes at you, Jesus is there. When you've wrecked your car, Jesus is with you. When you're at the airport, tired and frustrated, Jesus is with you. When you're at the store waiting in line, when you're at the hospital, when you're in class, when you're out at the bar, when you're walking alone, or when you're out with your friends, Jesus is there. We are weak, we are vulnerable, we are susceptible to temptation. We are fragile and we make mistakes. We will fail, we all do. But that's okay, especially if we have Jesus with us. In our scripture today, Jesus is encouraging the disciples that even though they will face hardships and even death for following him, he's still bigger than all of it. The world will still continue to struggle with sin, but he offers a way to conquer the sin and to move forward to finding a meaningful life on earth that leads to an eternal life with him. Jesus is always there. He has all the authority in heaven and on earth, and he is always with you until the end of the age. Today I have some little baby Jesus figurines, and I want everyone, as you leave here today, to grab a little figurine, because just like when we send our graduates off with a walking stick, Jesus is with us too. And keep Jesus in your pocket, in your car, in your purse, wherever you need a reminder that Jesus is with you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley, for those encouraging words for all of us, not just our graduates. And now as we prepare to share in our tithes and offerings, I I remind you that your gifts to the church go to further our ministries, those ministries that help grow these young folks here at the church to now move on out into the world, our ministries with all of our children. I also wanted to give another brief little announcement I forgot earlier. As I mentioned in my prayer, of course, the General Conference was held down in Charlotte last week. There's some new legislation, some changes for the United Methodist Church. Our bishop is having a webinar on Wednesday at both noon and 7 p.m. We'll be sharing that information if you'd like to watch that webinar. In addition, we will, down in the Potter Room, uh, be beaming it in in case you are unable to watch it and you'd like to, you're unable to do it at home, but you'd like to see it. Watch for more information about that. But rest assured, all of your gifts to our church go to further the ministries of our local church and the United Methodist Church across the world, a church that's touching lives in all places and bringing good news to all people. So now let us celebrate with our tithes and offerings.
You may be seated. I invite you now to join with me in the great thanksgiving as we prepare to share in the sacrament together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it's a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners, By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke that bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. For this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup. He again gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here in this place and all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us share the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken that we might have life. The cup of salvation poured out for us and for all peoples. Now I'd like to invite the the graduates that we're going to help serve to come on down. Uh, If you come and join me up here. I'm going to need you too, Ashley. Here you go. All right, got to, got to use the little bit of the holy hand sanitizer here. Mm. 
Okay. So maybe that goes. Okay. I'm gonna tell him to stand right here. Okay. Okay, you got it. Okay, and actually you and I'll serve the choir. Let's get David. It's the body of Christ for commercial. All right. Okay, guys, why don't you all come over here? Why don't you come this way a little bit? Okay, come this way a little bit. Switch places. Right on the side, cup there. There we go. All right. Now, we're practicing the communion by extinction. This is our custom. We're inviting you all to come through. We have two stations here at the front with our graduates. Ashley and I will be serving the, the choir and then filling in wherever we can. Uh, these items here uh, on the altar table are gluten-free, if you need gluten-free uh, and self-contained uh, um, elements for you, for those of you that need them. But let us feast at the table and celebrate this day. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, as we arise from this table to go forth into the world, we come as those who've received and been given your grace through this mystery of the sacrament. May we carry that which we've received out into your world to share it with others so that all might know your love and all might know your peace. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Now I invite you to stand for our closing hymn, This is a Day of New Beginnings. As we prepare to go forth, don't forget the, the, the taco bar down in the fellowship hall. Go down and celebrate with one another. But now let us go forth into the world knowing that Jesus is with us. And my guess is Jesus is always there ahead of us and begging us to come follow him wherever he leads. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>